Okay, y'all, so I, well, we are going to be reviewing Game of Thrones every single episode. Yeah, every single episode. Yeah, every single episode, okay? We're going to be reviewing that. We have watched the show. I can't count how many times at this point, but I have never watched the show and reviewed it. And when you watch the show and you review it, you kind of catch a whole lot of more things versus, you know, you just kind of casually watching it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I feel like by the time we're done with this, House of Dragons is going to be the fuck one probably by then, by the time. Well, no. No, it's not that many episodes. But still, when House of Dragons come on, don't care what state YouTube is in, I will be reviewing that show from the very beginning. First episode and all. So, yeah. So, let's start off. <clears throat> the first episode, please chime in whenever, because I will keep going. So, um, Episode one, we start off, we see these three people come out, come to find out they're rangers, okay? And they are going, this little gate is lifted up, and they're going to look like towards like a little wooded, a little bit of woods, wooded area. It's snowing, but it's wooded at the same time. Sorry, it's hard for me to explain, <laughs> okay? So, one of them goes off on their own. I guess they, did all three of them split up from each other? Or did two of them go together and one went by himself? Well, we saw it when they left the gate. Yeah. They went. They all they, they just left the, They just went, and then they saw a certain part of them walking and walking and walking, but they finally settled down, and then they tell the one dude to go off. Okay, boom. So, Yaxi. So, he ends up going off or whatever, and he finds pretty much this camp, right? But the camp is all of these people that are dead as, they're dead as fuck. They're cut up. Somebody done came through, chopped, the sliced. The chopped and screwed, dismembered, they did all of that to them. And on top of that, they are, when uh, the camera pans out, it shows that they're in this weird-ass prince-looking-like symbol or whatever, feminism symbol. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Okay. If you ever know prince, if you know anything about prince, no. he has this symbol, and it looks like the prince symbol, okay? So that's that's what I thought it was okay. the first time around. But anyway, so yeah. So, Okay, so, spoiler alert, if y'all didn't watch the show, I'm so sorry, I don't know why you're watching this, but we're gonna jump ahead, because a lot of the things that, there's a few things in here that I, like, I caught on, not that I caught on to, but I thought about things that happened later, and I want to tie it back into it. So, my question is, did we ever figure out what the hell that symbol meant? No. Okay, alrighty, so if anybody knows what that symbol means for real, let me know in the comments, alrighty. It changed since Jerry died. So then, um, okay, so the guy who's seen, who seen the, the uh, camp or whatever runs back to the other two rangers pretty much and tells them what he saw. Now, the two rangers are thinking that it's some people called the wildlands. Now, we don't know who the wildlands are yet in this point of the story, but you they're can make saying, guesses. but of course, you can make guess, guesses. So they're pretty much saying that, you know, um, they're thinking it's the wild, wildlands and they're supposed to be tracking them anyway. So they're just going to keep moving forward. Even though the ranger who's seen everything is like, I'm about to get the fuck out of Dodge, which, understandable, I'd be out too. Y'all on your own. Okay? So then, they end up going back to the same place where the guy said he's seen everything, and they get there, and all of the bodies are gone. So, of course, everybody's looking at him like, you know, you done lost your mind, and he's and looking course, like... Of course, you had thought, uh, a viewer looking at it like, I know, I just seen that, so what the fuck's going on? Obviously, we're going looking at it as, you know. We never seen the whole thing before, of course. Right. So then the rangers keep walking or whatever, and eventually, I think like, well, I don't know what the hell the ranger was doing, but he was doing something, and you see slowly coming up behind him, this white thing with blue eyes. No, so, not slowly. He just. Well, I'm saying the way that the camera did it, it was slowly at first, the first time he did slowly. Right? It, it doesn't matter. Came up behind them, okay. And then it was curtains for his ass, pretty much. Then the next thing we see is the original ranger, the first ranger. He is now hauling ass because he's getting chased by um the little girl who be jumping in the hallways with the uh with in, in Freddy Krueger, her and her friend that be jumping with the jump ropes. The little girl from Rick and Morty. Shut up. That's who was chasing him. So no, it was, it was just dead people. Well, it was her at first. That's who he seen first. That's who he just seen. Just That's what I'm saying. Chasing. He seen first, and then all of them started coming after them. Kind of like if y'all seen. Who do you think they're faster? No, the one. Side note: Do you think the zombies in Kingdom Netflix good show is faster than them? Much faster. 
Hell yeah. They much faster. If y'all don't get into Kingdom, watch Kingdom. But this is this is this is just inconsistent lighting on the face of the White Walkers. We're gonna touch on that as we go throughout the episode. So yeah. So then we go through the intro, which is the most iconic intro song probably of all time. Y'all y'all know the theme song already. Anyway. So, eventually we see that this guy right here, the first original ranger that was getting caught. Oh, sorry, before the intro hit, sorry. Eventually, he sees the same little blue-eyed person that had came and got his other friend together. He ended up seeing him chop somebody's head off right in front of him, and then he threw it in front of him like, boom, there go your friend's head. Now what you gonna do? Then we go to the intro. Now after intro, you see that same deserter, he, he's running or whatever, and you see like, these people on horses or whatever, they pretty much come and surround him. Now, pause, because I had a question about this. Why do you think the, well, we know what they are, white. Why did you think they let him go? I can't really touch point on that without spoiling something way further down the line. Okay, all right, so we'll keep going. I would just assume to be just like how they would have, like, in war in general, you know how you just keep one survivor to be like, go, go tell your king yeah. what you've seen here. Gotcha. I feel like it was one of those situations. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, so they don't talk at all. So then we go to Winterfell, okay? And Winterfell is it's not the main spot, but it's one of the main kingdoms that we're gonna be at during this whole series, okay? Now I'm gonna name all of the people because we already know the name of all the characters and they're pointing me bullshit around here. So we start off when we see is it do you say it brand? Because you always say that I say it wrong. Brand. Okay, brand, okay. He is in the little court, little area that they have, and he's shooting arrows with Jon Snow, okay, and Rob Stark behind him, two older brothers, okay? Then we also look up, and we see Ned Stark, who is the king of Winterfell, well, is, well, is he a king? Lord of Winterfell. Lord of Winterfell, okay? And then we see his wife, Catelyn Stark, okay, who is the lady of Winterfell. Then, for a brief second, we go and we meet Sansa, and we meet Arya. Sansa is the redhead, okay, and she is all good, you know, at what ladies are supposed to do, and then we see Arya. Arya doesn't give a fuck about what's going on with this whole stitch and shit. So, <clears throat> um, while Bran is shooting his little arrows and stuff like that, he's not really getting it, he's not doing too well, but then out of nowhere, you see an arrow go straight by him, and it hits the middle target. It's Arya. Arya's in the back, putting in that work, you know, pretty much giving us foreshadowing vibes, okay? And everybody's laughing because she's the shit. This is pretty much what it gets down to. She is the shit, okay? So, then, after that, when Bran is off chasing uh, Arya, whatever, we see Ned and Catelyn, they talking about, you know, whatever, we know, getting to know their characters. So then, was it the Maester that came and brought them the news? Mm-hmm. The Maester, Maester Lu, Lu, Lewin. Lewin comes and pretty much tells them, you know that the ex uh the the person the first ranger that we've seen who we are now calling a deserter because we'll get to what he deserted his post we'll get to that but y'all know what it what it is they already explained it yeah they already explained the it. Song here. yeah so <clears throat> he's like okay cool so we about to go ride out so he tells Catelyn, look i'm bringing uh i'm bringing bread with me just to let you know and she's like no he's too young he's only 10 he shouldn't be able to see that and he's like no, he's not going to be your boy forever. And if y'all didn't understand, winter is coming. Okay? We need it, it, we need y'all to understand winter is coming. And see, Catelyn doesn't understand what he mean when he said winter is coming. Winter's coming. We ain't got time to be holding nobody's hands. And what, this is what I, what I wonder is when Rob was a little bit younger, like what, what was the first time Rob seen like Ned do that? Because you would think that they've already had this conversation before about what they're gonna do with their son you know what i mean well i'm pretty sure that the night's watch given it is what it is uh probably had a shit ton of deserters probably forever will i mean I, i'm I, i'm not giving my <laughs> life up to the still freeze at the end of the world <laughs> right so then we go over okay and who all went everybody everybody all of the men pretty much went to go see the exit exit uh execution or whatever so when they're bringing the deserter up to the little whatever it's called to get his head cut the hell off okay he's pretty much saying you know i know what i saw i saw the walk i saw what are you did he call them the walkers did he call them so the? i saw the white walkers I, i've seen the white walkers okay they're real they're real but you want to know what he pretty much just gave it up there ain't no much more that he can do it just is what it is so 
Ned, you know, being the man that he is, he takes the sword and chop, chop, night, night. It's over. It's a wrap. So he cut his head off, okay? Now, while he was doing that, John tells Bran to not look away, pretty much. Like, you have to see this. You have to become a quote-unquote man. You have to you have to take all of this in, okay? So he watches his father do it. So then when Bran is, you know, getting his horse ready to leave, Ned Stark comes over and he asks him, you know, do you know why I did it? Like, why I did it? He's like, you know, well, John told me that he was a dessert. He's like, well, yeah, but... Do you know why I swung the sword? And as we all know, it is a famous quote from Ned Stark by now. Um, the one who passes the judgment should swing the sword. And even Bran said, like, we do it the old way. A lot of the North is old tradition, right? Don't they really do, like, first the whole... First men traditions. Yeah, first men traditions. Like, they're very big on keeping, like, the first men traditions and everything. Like he was wrong, said. With the like, gods and stuff, right? Yeah. I wasn't going to jump that far ahead, but yeah. Yes. I was, but yeah so so that so Bran also asked him you know well do you pretty much do you believe him when he said that he's seen white walkers and he's like you know well mad men see what it is that they see so Ned doesn't really believe it he does like you can tell throughout the episode he doesn't believe it but he kind of it's one of those things I would like, say you oh, this is foreshadowing this fuck okay I'm just not gonna word it like that when you know uh, something to be could be true, but you'd rather not believe it just for the sake of, you know, peace of mind. You don't. Right. They're not ready for a war like that. That's pretty much what he's thinking. And That's too big to, like, yeah. contemplate right now. Yeah. yeah. You got enough going on. So, um, after that, they go into the, like, I don't know where they were, but they were somewhere in the woods or whatever. And they see this deer is all mangled up. <laughs> something fucked them up or whatever. So then they go down and they find um, this huge, 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 huge ass fucking wolf, which come we come to find out was called a dire wolf, but we don't get to, the dire wolf, the big one is dead. But then you see the little puppies and you know, so everybody's kind of like, oh look at the puppies. Well, not everybody. Brand is kind of like, oh look at the puppies. Everybody else is like, all right. Now, did you see the look that Ned gave the other guy when when they first saw the dire wolves? Like they specifically panned to Ned looking. Like they put the camera specifically on that, and they put it on him looking at. Oh well, yes, the, um, like why do you think he gave? I think it was like the mace or whoever the hell. It wasn't the well, mace, to I me personally, just because the writing is somewhat good, but not fully, you know. There, um, I feel like that was kind of like going from scene to scene, pretty much saying White Walkers existed, and he's like, Dire Wolves aren't this far right. stuck below the wall, and he said, Hmm, White Walkers, Dire Wolves. Yeah, like something is starting to feel a little off because yeah, yeah, he, so he ended up saying almost, that later to yeah, his brother yeah it's almost like they're even like uh, foreshadowing like putting all the pieces together like it does make sense why yeah. would a dire wolf come out down. unless they knew something dangerous or dangerous was out there which right. the only thing would be is you know dead people right so they found five of them originally and at first um, you know <clears throat> they were going to kill them but um, John Snow came up with the idea that because they are there are five of the children, which I didn't talk about the other two, four, 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 four Stark, sorry. So why did he say five? Well, it was four dire wolves. One for each of the Starks, Bran. Uh, so I was say Joffrey, <laughs> Bran, Sansa, Arya, and uh, little uh, Rickon. And then the fifth one was John's. No, it's five. Who's the fifth child? It's we're gonna we're gonna do the the daughters. It's Arya, Sansa, mm -hmm. then the boys. It's Rob, Brand, and then oh, I, I didn't five. say Rob. That's what it was. Yeah, it's five. So yeah, but, see, you making me think I'm wrong. I know I know what I had written down. Because Rickon's not. He's... I know that. That's why I said the other two we didn't really get to. Well, not the other two. I meant to say the other one we didn't get to because he's not important. He's not important at all. <laughs> at all okay, I don't even understand the whole point of him. He's on. Whatever. It's kind of like, whatever, Continue. whatever. I could go on a whole rant about that. Continue, anyway. So, but then, when they're walking away, they found, a, uh, John found another itty-bitty little dire wolf that was in a cut, and we come to find out later his name, name, name is Theon. Theon says, oh, well, that's the little runt of the pack. You know, you can have them. He said that one's yours. Yeah, pretty much. You know, pretty always, much. All white, all uh, pop out of the letter, and it's the uh, runt. The runt, and that's what he is. He's, he's the bastard, so, yeah. Which we end up finding out a little bit later, but yeah, he's back. Come on, boy. Move. Move. So, Bobby, go sit down. You are always in my videos, and I don't understand it. You can stand right there. That's fine. 
So then we switch over and we go to King's Landing. King's Landing is the capital of the Seven Kingdoms, okay? And we see there is a funeral being held, okay? I always find it very, very, very weird um, that they have the little rocks on their eyes. I know people do that, like, in real life, too. I just, it always, like, it took me a long time to not be creeped out by seeing that. Like, on Game of Thrones, when somebody dies, little rocks over, like, their eyes. It's weird. Anyway, so, we see Cersei and we meet Jamie, Okay? Cersei and Jamie are brother and sister, okay? They're having a conversation pretty much about, you know, how they grew up in Casterly Rock. And, you know, Jamie is Prince Charming, okay? That's his whole aura. That's his whole look. That's who that's who he's supposed to be, I'm telling you. From the way his hair is done and he's all blonde and shit, he's supposed to be Prince Charming from, like, the Shrek movie. That's who he's supposed to be. I do. I, I get what you mean. So. In that sense, that's who he's supposed to be, okay? So... They all, they end up talking or whatever. Now, in this conversation, they pretty much say to one another, like, Cersei's pretty much saying, like, do you think that John Aaron, What's somebody did something, dead. who that is dead, do you think somebody actually did something to him? Because, you know, it seemed like he might have known something, but I don't really know what he knew. And Jamie's pretty much trying to reassure, reassure her, like, whatever it is he did know, like, he did, so it's dead with him. But you could tell she's a little concerned. Yeah, she was pretty much asking, like, do you think he told anybody? Whatever the fuck he knew. Right. Um, like, he knew something. But yeah. at this time, we don't know what he knew, but clearly he knew something. Foreshadowing, building right. a plot for something else. And it's almost like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, without spoiling much more, it's, it's just building a plot. Right. So then we go back to Winterfell, and Catelyn comes through and tells um, Ned, you know, that she got the raven saying that John Aaron was dead. And John Aaron, um, she said, was kind of like a father to him. Now, this is a side note. I always want to understand how, like, ravens work. How do they know where to go? How? I would like to know the training behind that. But that's Ooh, neither here nor there. I know. It's just amazing to me. But anyway. Just never seen someone do it. Like <laughs> yeah, never. So, you know. So, of course, he's upset about it or whatever. And she tells him pretty much that the king is now coming up north. And he knows what that means. John Aaron was the hand of the king, aka kind of like not his, not not the vice president. Cause the vice president ain't even got that much say. Just if like the, his right hand. Wait, wait, wait! If the president died during his uh, time, yeah, the vice president, president takes him. over, correct? Yeah, he yeah. Does. So it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's just the hand of the king, though. In all reality, does way more than a vice president actually does in the United States of America. Just saying. But I mean, yeah, I always kings look do at much more than just the president I mean, I, do too. <laughs> I mean, I've always looked at the hand of the king to literally mean like my right hand like you know when people said that's literally right all hand. it is that's my right hand yeah so yeah so coming up to the north to pretty much ask ned to be the hand of the king you could already tell him and catlin are just like mm, this this some shit this some shit so we see the whole procession i will call it you know of everybody of the king and all of his people coming up to winterfell okay now eventually I, I don't know why i put this because i found it interesting when he finally did get down and he talked to you know he got down and he met everybody we meet everybody in well not in order but you know we meet all of the starks pretty much catlin and everybody down the line i did find it interesting though that somewhere in there cersei said that it took them a month to get there he did put real emphasis on that like, that blows like, my mind. That I mean, I understand like that walking. the north from King from King's Landing. It's like I know the north is vast, and you I know it's far. You tried taking a horse from Mexico, the bottom of Mexico, all the way up. Here, it takes forever. It's crazy. It a whole time. month. My goodness. Okay, but anyway, so and like I, I said, using the King's Road. Now, the, uh, now, one of the main things is, you know, Cersei, you know, gets out and meets everybody. And that's when we, at that time, that's when we learned that she's the queen. Because prior to that, we don't know that when she's talking to Jamie, that doesn't come up, that she's actually the queen. Okay, anyway, so. I don't know, I know what you want me to say there. I want you to say, yeah, that's true. But anyway, so, um, while they're meeting or whatever, you can hear Arya saying, like, you know, like, where's the imp? Like, where's the imp or whatever? And, you know, eventually Cersei kind of over here, so it's like, where is my brother? So then we meet Lord Tyrion, okay? Lord Tyrion, we'll get back to the whole thing with Ned and, uh, and the king in a second. But we meet Tyrion, okay? 
one of the one one of the most beloved characters on the whole show okay he is doing what he was known best to do in the beginning which is drinking and having a whole lot of sex okay whoring whoring drinking and whoring okay so that's pretty much how we meet him jamie comes to see him and is like look i need you to come to this feast so go ahead and get your rocks off now okay go get your rocks off now now when before when cersei was saying about they they was riding for a long time they was riding for months she said that because um the king aka damn robert. It, robert there we go robert said to ned like take me to the crypt aka well yeah i know what a crypt is so they go down to the crypt or whatever and they go to see ned's sister okay now ned's sister was supposed to marry robert okay and we don't really get the full story but we just pretty much find out yeah. that she was yet that's what i'm saying we don't get the full story yet but from this scene we pretty much get that something happened to her he said that someone took her away from him and that well, says they said the target yeah i know let me get there keep that let me get there okay and ned said, said and ned said okay you ain't got to worry about that because all of the targaryens are gone and he said not all of them Good transition, y'all, because that's how we transition to meeting Daenerys, the unburnt, the unchanged. Well, she she don't have all of those. Yeah, oh, you're just spoiling so much. Yeah. Who cares? Anyway, if you didn't watch Game of Thrones by now, like, there's an issue with you. Anyway, we meet Daenerys, okay? Danny. Danny is in Pen Pentos. I think that's what she was at. Yeah, she was in Pentos originally. So we end up meeting Danny, and then we also meet her brother. Is it Viserys? Is that how you say it? Because I always say their names wrong. Viserys, okay? And so he pretty much is talking to her, you know, gets real uncomfortable, um, you know, with him unrobing her. It's very, very uncomfortable. But he pretty I mean, much you is, would too if your brother started taking your clothes off and fondling your breasts. Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable, okay? So he pretty much tells her, you know, like, you're a woman now, and, you know, so you need to let that be known and show that off. And, you know, I need you to get, whenever this man comes, I need you to do what Go you need matters. to do to get that man, okay? So we can do what we need to do to get this throne back. So he leaves her, and she ends up getting into this bath. Now, this bath is cold and hot. It's hot as shit. Like, you can see how hot it is. But sis don't care. She just walks right in, and one of her maids is like, don't. It's too hot. It's too hot. She doesn't feel a thing. You needed the accent. I tried my best, okay? So then after she gets done with her bath, okay, clearly, we go outside, and um, she's outside waiting with her brother, and what, what's the other guy's name that there was? What's his name? Who? The guy that was there, like, the guy with the robe. I don't remember his name, but I remember he's, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but the spider's friend. We're going to call him Rubber Band Man, because he got rubber bands around his thing. So Rubber Band Man, Danny, and her brother are standing outside, so he pretty much says, you know, that the Dothraki, okay, they're coming. They don't come on time. They come when they want to. When they pull up, you see why? You see why? They, they come when they want to. Are you going to tell them? Oh, you're late. That was so rude. I'm not going to tell them shit. So, they pull up or whatever, and then we see Jason Momoa, a.k.a. Aquaman, a.k.a. Um, Denise Huxtable's husband, okay? He pulls up on the horse. Skirt, skirt. Drogo. So, Let's just say Drogo. That's what I said. I gave him a whole bunch of AK so people know who he is. He's all of these people. Cal Drogo, a.k.a. Jason Momoa, a.k.a. Hey, hey, Aquaman. Just leave it on where he's playing All this. righty. So then, so then, he comes up. And so Danny comes, walks up in front of him. You know, he just looks her up and down like, all right, I see. He doesn't say any of this. This is my, this is my interpretation. All right, I see you, shorty. I see you. Are right, you cute or whatever? And so then he pulls off, okay? So <laughs> because he doesn't say anything, um, uh, Viserys says to Rubber Band Man there, like, how did that go? Like, did he like her or whatever? And so he's like, trust me, if he didn't like her, he would absolutely know. So it's pretty much the deal is done. The deed, the dark deed has been done at this point, okay? So then we go back over to Winterfell, and they are in the middle of having the big feast that they're having, okay? They, they point out clearly and obviously that the king is out here grabbing titties and ass and kissing right in front of the queen. He does not care. He is the king. He, he does not care what she looked like neither. Cause, uh, oh, yeah. He didn't. No, 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 no. He did not care. I would much rather been over to research. Like, the person that was in there with Tyrion, 
makes way more sense on the type of person he would have been trying to grab up on. This, I, whatever. But the king has no standards, clearly. So, then we go outside and we see John. He's hacking away at some little whatever the heck it's called. How many minutes does this say? Well, I got here yet. Okay. He's hacking away, you know, at this little, what is it called? I don't know. He's chopping at something. So then eventually... His Uncle Benjamin shows up. He says, what's up, Uncle Benjamin? How you doing? He said, I'm doing good. How are you? Why are you out here and not inside in the feast? And he's like, you know what uh, Lady Catelyn said? Pretty much, I would be a disgrace. And I, he, she didn't want to insult the queen because he's a bastard, okay? So, you know, she didn't want him around. So Uncle Benjamin's like, okay, well, you know, I'm about to go in there, go see your dad or whatever. And so John is like, well, look, you know, whenever you leave, I want to go with you. And he's like, you don't want to go with me. Now, Uncle Benjamin is in the Night's Watch, which is what the first three rangers that we see in the beginning, that's what they were in. They were in the Night's Watch. But he explains to John, you don't necessarily want to do that because you think you want to, but you don't know the vows that we have to take, you know. We can't have any families. We can't have any kids, none of that. John says, I don't give a fuck about that. I just want to go. Like, you could tell. How bad was Lady, was Lady Catelyn treating this man that he said he don't care about none of that? He just won't go. He just want to go. Yeah, but just like Benjamin said, everyone says that until you realize much later in life that you're really giving up a shit ton. Like, not That's raising true. a family, John being a virgin, a virgin, yeah. and then swearing off women. Yeah. Oh, God. So then Tyrion pretty much comes um, after his Uncle Benjamin leaves, and, you know, he talks to him, too, and, you know, they kind of, like, vibe with each other a little bit on the fact that Tyrion is an imp, and, you know, he's a bastard, and he says to him, you know, pretty much, don't be offended when somebody calls you a bastard, wear it as an armor so no one can hurt you, and I love that because it gives me, it's pretty much the same thing when I say to people, don't ever let somebody burn you with your own teeth. Like, if somebody has something negative to say about you, you take that in your own person. You don't let them use that against you. You, you. you leave that way. So then, we go back over to the dinner, and Sansa comes up, and she meets the queen or whatever. Sansa's 13, and apparently she ain't got, she ain't have her period yet, because that was asked by the queen, which is just like, I mean, sorry, I get it, but... I got real deep real quick. We could have skipped that over that. Sure could have, Okay. So then Kat Catelyn is in bed with um, Ned or whatever, and they're talking, you know, about how he doesn't want to go be the Hand of the King. She gets this rate, she gets this message, she hurries up and throws it in the fire. And pretty much what it says is that, okay, John Aaron was married to Catelyn's sister. She gets a letter from her sister pretty much saying that she has fled the capital and went back to the Erie, which is her kingdom or whatever. Well, she went back from. home. She went back home. And the reason she did that is because someone, she said that someone murdered her husband it was the lannisters who murdered her husband and that they were plotting on pretty much killing the king as well so at this point ned is probably is put in a position where it's like i don't want to leave but at the same time like mr lewin told him you are the only real friend and true friend that the king has which is true it is very and you swore enough to protect and you them swore which... and then in the letter it did say that uh, uh the king's in danger as well oh yeah we gotta hear 28 minutes. Okay. So then we have the wedding with Daenerys and Khal Drogo. There's a whole lot of fucking, a whole lot of sex that's going on there. We meet Jorah Mormont. Okay. Jorah Mormont comes through and says he's here to serve the rightful king, which is her brother or whatever. And then she also receives some dragon eggs, which they say were stoned and they found in the shadows of, what is it? Ashai? Ashai. Ashai or whatever. So she gets that. They, she, gets, she gets a white horse as a gift from Khal Drogo. They go off to this really, really, really nice scenic place. But then they have sex for the first time, but it's not no. like... No. No. That's all I'm going to say. Just no. Okay. So then, finally, you know, Ned and them is about to go out. I think they was going hunting or whatever. And the king just, you know, no, relays... Okay, whatever, they leaving. So the king says to Ned, again, you know, I really trust you. That's why I need you to come with me, because I trust you. We switch over, we see Bran climbing this wall or whatever. He's been climbing all day. His mama done told him to keep his ass down. He gets to the top of this damn tower. He hear a whole bunch of, ah, ah. Okay, and then he goes. <laughs> he goes to the window. But he goes to the window. And he, treat sees, me too. <laughs> and he sees Cersei and Jamie having sex. Again, no, Cersei and Jamie Cersei are brother and, and sister, aka and they are twin they're twin freaking brother and sister at siblings. that. So siblings. So then when they see him, you know, 
Jamie grabs him and is like, are you serious? Like, how old are you? He said, 10, the things I do for love. Pushed him out the window. That's the end of that episode. What a good first episode, was it not? It's yeah, a good but, way to grab is, your attention. But we're going to take these last two minutes real quick. Harry, because say... I got, like, literally less than a minute before this cut off. Um, who would you say is a memorable character so far in the first episode? Memorable characters. Cersei, John. In what in what sense? John because he's just like moping, and then Cersei because she's like you could just tell she she got her eye on everything. She knows the fuck's going on. I would say for me it would be Ned Stark because for some reason he's just very likable and he just seems very very mm-hmm. very honest and like I don't know that to me that sticks out a lot and obviously John too just because like he said. uh well, Tyrion and John, just because like he said, uh, all dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. And if John's life is really that bad, uh, I can't even imagine what his life was like. Obviously, without spoiling. Um, and the last thing was, I wanted to say to you guys, was uh, when she was getting her gifts, Daenerys, what the fuck was she going to do with snakes? I have no idea. We're going to end it right there. I have no idea. But y'all get in the comments, y'all tell me, which I think we'll be back for episode two. I don't know when, got to go back.